Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to have a crack at repairing this little item. This is something I built uh, with the help of uh, my friend in Portugal um, a little time, a little while ago. Um, I think it was like, yeah, it's about a year ago now. Um, unfortunately, it has got one of those uh, ESP, oh, what is it? Um, 8622 can't remember I'd have to look it up but the little the little um, Wi-Fi module in it and it uh, seems to be playing up because it stops actually sending data back over the network and I can see that because this light down here the uh, network time protocol light is not green now that should be green and it should be updating the clock. The clock is correct at the moment because um, the RCT, the real time clock, is keeping the keeping the time, but um, it isn't actually getting it from the internet, and so that will drift. And uh, but the other thing is that we use that Wi-Fi module here to actually update some of the data. Um, and here some of this stuff the air monitor data um, needs to be uploaded via this it comes what happens is, is it comes across on 433 megahertz on one of these antennas and uh, yeah and and then it actually gets transmitted um, back up to at the moment it is going to um, is it um, Bing speak whatever it's getting plotted on there but it isn't because this stopped working so what we're going to do today is we're going to use the um, surface mount device and this is the reason why I brought it here it is over yonder the surface mount um, soldering station here or rework station and we're going to take that chip off and um, maybe replace it and see if we can um, get it back working again so uh, yeah I'm just quickly just giving you a little demo of this this is a case that I'm in I'm really really happy with the way this case turned out this is um, uh, just acrylic black acrylic been laser cut glued together with the uh, special glue and uh, yeah it's fantastic but um, I'll get the iPad uh, all put on the stand and get some uh, light happening in here and uh, and we'll switch over to that and I'll show you the insides and we'll have a crack at getting that uh, getting that Wi-Fi module off and uh, see if we put a new one on so stand by okay we're back um, I've got to take this board out of here because I've got to desolder something and the little something is actually the battery now you can see it's over there by that ESP module it's over on the very left top hand side I've got to get that battery out of there because I don't want the heat right on it so I'm going to uh, just skip ahead and um, take the PCB the printed circuit board off and get rid of that battery and then we will carry on uh, the process of desoldering it with the hot air rework station. So stand by. Just looking up um, about this, uh, this uh, what is it, the ESP8266. It does have an operating temperature of only 125C. It doesn't tell me what the max temperature is, but I might just double check that. So I may have to be quite um, careful about the heat storage temperature 125 max yeah, frequency temperature yeah look it's not going to tell us So solder sort of melts at, I believe, around um, about 
200 degrees Celsius. I'll just double check that. I'm looking that up. Sorry, you can't see that, but I'm not uh, moving the camera around again. Uh, 188. So I'm going to be I'm going to be um, very careful here, and I'm just going to set it to I think about 225. And let's see if we can get that off without causing too much trouble. Wish us luck. We're going in. <laughs> and I've actually set this to a pretty low fan speed. I might even take it lower. Actually, I've got that set to uh, 230 um, Celsius. It's just heating up. Just grab a snap of that. There we go. Alright. I think we're set to start. We're going in, folks. So this is actually a uh, bit of a top secret project. I will say a little bit about it though because I believe it is going to be publicly announced later in the year and you will also be able to build your own. It is the Weber Duino Pro 4, sorry the 4 Pro. At the moment there's a Pro 2 and a Pro 2 Plus that you can build but this one is a little bit more advanced um, yeah so yeah what this what this is is this is the receiver for the uh, the Weber Dorino um, Weber station and so this gets all the sensor information uh, over the 433 megahertz link from the uh, transmitter unit outside which has got all the sensors connected to it um, in my case it's wind uh, speed, direction, um, rain, temperature, humidity so that's all coming over the wireless link on uh, 433 uh, megahertz in this case and, um, and also there's another unit which is the air quality monitor um, and that's also talking over its own 433 megahertz link. This grabs all those sensors, and you can have a lot more, a uh, lot more transmitters on it. So you can have, oh, I can't remember what the exact number of how many extra you can have, but it is quite a few. And uh, yeah, so you can have them all over the place if you want. You know, within. Um, the radio link range which is generally up to 100 meters line of sight no such luck there yet just wondering whether I should put a bit more fan speed on it, I'm still a bit of a newbie on this, uh, the last video I made me testing it out was actually the last time I used it and uh, that was a couple of weeks ago But yeah, I could probably like um, put some stronger glasses on and might be able to see when the solder actually starts um, liquefying. So 
slow and steady as she goes. I've actually been a bit crook this week. I had a couple of days off work. I'm going back to work tomorrow. Feeling a bit better. I'm still not 100%, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame. I think that's melted that bit. Bear with me, folks. I'm just going to turn the fan up just a little. Don't know if you heard that increase. Stinking hot in Australia here at the moment, so I've actually got a, like, uh, a little fan beside me blowing over me, so it could be making a bit of noise. Uh, I apologise if it is. Hopefully I don't wreck this board. <laughs> need a bloody vice, that's what I need. I wonder if it might be just worthwhile actually um, just trying to reflow these. Like you know, I've I've really tried um, soldering with a soldering station, just just a normal soldering iron, uh, two or three times previously to try and get this working, and I did fix it once, and then for some reason it just stopped again. So it could be dry joint, I'm not sure. Come on baby, you can come off there. Well, this must be like watching paint dry. Sighting viewing this, people. Hmm. Might just try another pair of glasses. That's oh, wearing two at a time, two pairs at once. <laughs> uh, yeah, certainly those joints do look dry. Yeah, I can't say I'm the best um, surface mount solderer. My friend uh, in Portugal who makes, well, gets these boards made and who designed the system, um, he put a lot of these boards, a lot of these chips on the boards before he shipped it over to me. Um, I just needed to populate a few of the capacitors and, uh, you know, especially all the surface mount ones here and, and uh, those parts, uh, you know, all, all this sort of stuff. So that was a great help. I like, oh, look, I, these these chips here, I probably uh, would have been pulling my hair out. I probably wouldn't ever work. <laughs> Come on, baby. So what my plan is, I'll, I'm, I think I'll just carry on or. A box on 
and I will take this one completely off clean up all the pads um, maybe just put a touch of solder on them put a touch of solder on the new ones try and get it in position probably a little bit better than I did this one I think I was just off by a, by a little bit um, and and uh, let's see how it goes and then I, I might just solder some pins on this or put it on another uh, piece of strip board or something and um, fire it up and see if we can get see if we can get it talking um, just in a test setup pretty amazing the more I read about these ESP chips it's quite incredible what, what you can do with them uh, you've got like Arduino you know you can run Arduino on them I believe oh man that's this is taking forever right well, cranking up the heat Even that cap side, it doesn't look that great either. Oh, look, there she goes. She's off, people. Woohoo! Alright. Let's just get a bit of... Uh, let's get a bit of this in here. Turn that off to be quite honest. <coughs> Wonder how this will work. <laughs> Don't make sure it's too bad, you know. Oh, that's working a treat. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hmm, lovely. Oh, that wasn't good. If it came off, I didn't see that. Come on, baby. Ooh, 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 crikey. Oh man, do I suck at this stuff or what? Hopefully, I didn't break that. Let's get that clean up, too. Oh yeah, look, there is something there. What's that? Is that a bit of a capacitor? Right. Let's put that there. I'll just give this a bit of a clean up around here. Get 
all that rosin off there. And this is just a bit of a damp rag. Look at that, like a new one. Boys, lovely jubbly. Oh yeah. Two thumbs up. There they are. Uh, right, where's my old multi meter? Let's see if that cap's still looking good. Top there, probably see that better than I can. Ooh, I was reading something. go dude 51k is that Fifty one. no I think this is 51 ohm oh I'd have to get the schematic out to see what that's meant to be I think we'll just solder that back on very very gingerly <clears throat> I don't know why they use that word gingerly Bit unusual. Mm. Hard to say. This one here, this one's in the middle, may not have had solder on them. GP, GPI input 0408. Alrighty, where's that solder? on here hopefully come on there you go didn't want quite that much but hey actually actually let's take that bit off Yeah, these are my Mrs. Um, eye plucking, eye plucking uh, tweezers. What's going on this one? What's going on here? Oh, is that ever to work again? Don't know. So there's that piece there. That's what makes me worried. Might have to replace that. Shouldn't have any shortage of those, so I always can. Oh man, I'm so clumsy. This 
this is going to be the longest video in history if we keep up like this. Pros do it. Well, let's just give it a whirl, see what happens. Vision's not really great for this sort of stuff. And with two pairs of glasses on, I've got to get right and close. situation let's see what happens don't blow it off I think that just I think that worked there Oh, yes. Yes, I think that was success. It's coming in quick. Yeah, no. Temperature, thank you. Put it there so I can actually read it, eh? It's reading something. Fifty nanofarad, is it? Anyway, well, I'll just see what happens. What was that? It was uh, CV twenty one, is it? Right, let's bring in the new one. Dun, 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 dun. Seemed like a good bloke. Found him on eBay. Look him up. You wanna want some of this stuff in Australia at a good price? See what I mean? There's not much overhanging. Like nothing.
All right, folks. Well, uh, I think that was uh, successful. I'm going to pause this here and uh, go ahead and solder this on. I'm going to use my iron. I'm going to use my flux. And uh, hopefully we'll get some really good connections and solve this problem. I don't want to use the, uh, uh, the, the surface mount rework station on this just because I'm a newbie and, um, and I'm a bit worried about cooking it. My new one. I think I'll just go with that and uh, yeah, like I say, I'll use um, use flux and uh, try and do a decent job on the old soldering. I'll be back shortly. Okay, I'm finished. Um, I did learn something along the way. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. Uh, no, you didn't see because I didn't show you, but I actually started let's see where's my other finger good lord i started on two diagonal corners i soldered two diagonal corners and it looked pretty good from where i was sitting but i should have turned the board around because this row here of pins actually ended up out by about a quarter of a millimeter so they're not quite lined up the other side looked real good but anyway i think i'm going to power it up without the battery in because I'm pleased I took that out because uh, it would be a nightmare trying to solder these ones with that battery connector in there. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to power it up and uh, see if we get a um, Wi-Fi signal. So uh, I might do that while we're live. that guy seriously where was that <laughs> oh it was up here um, ground ground just, I took a picture of that let's just um, take a look So brown to ground. Which sort of makes sense because that's the way it wants to go. I won't plug the LED in just yet. But let's just pop that over. So we can carefully do this. Just leave it like that. You guys can see. Uh, USB, I don't need to plug in, but I do need to plug the power in. Here it goes. Good luck, folks. Wish me luck. Hope this is going to work. Takes a little while to boot. Saw some blinking on that ESP. Right. Oh, we have a greeny bingo. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, well, I'm going to put this all back together and we're going to call that success. Now, it does that. Uh, it's just initialization uh, routine. Okay, so I'll put this back together. I'll put this on pause, put it back together, and then I might just show you a few of the little features. Be back shortly. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, 
I do have a slight problem though, and I'm not sure what it is. Everything's going good. I can connect it on the internet. Look at that. She's all working. But I'm still not getting my ear monitor information. And now I have upgraded the firmware on that unit outside just tonight. Uh, about two hours ago, but it's it's not making its way here, so I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, I think that'll be a video for another time. Oh, the other other thing too, one other thing uh, is I forgot to solder the battery back in. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll do that another time. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed this video.